Oh boy, another day, another Fallout 76 train wreck. This one is probably the oddest one of them all, as the Fallout 76 T-51 power armor helmet has been recalled due to mold risk. We'll talk all about that. Also, Final Fantasy VII Remake's cover art has been revealed, and may I say, it looks aesthetic as hell. Very much a callback to the original cover art all the way back on the PlayStation 1's 1997 release. Also, we've got the revelation of the Echo Conscious side-scroller and Endlink that's been announced for the PlayStation 4, and it's due out all the way in quarter 1, 2021. We'll talk a little bit about that, but let's not get our expectations up too high at this point, given that it is still a long ways away. We'll take a look at that at the end of this video. But first up, let's talk possibly the strangest news story in a little while. Now, if I said that Fallout 76 is experiencing some sort of train wreck, that's not all too strange. That has been pretty typical since the game's release back in November. However, this one is a little bit odd. Fallout 76 T-51 power armor helmet has been recalled due to mold risk. The United States Consumer Product Safety Commission has issued a recall for the wearable helmet that was sold exclusively by GameStop. So yes, a bad look for GameStop as well, because this was an exclusive GameStop release. Those who purchased this would have been an owner of the wearable T-51 Power Armor helmet as seen in the game itself. According to the recall website, on the inside of the Fallout 76 themed helmet, the polyester cotton blend fabric insert may contain mold. This poses a risk of infections to those who may suffer from compromised immune systems, damaged lungs, or an allergy to mold. Full refunds are being offered to those who do contact GameStop, to which they'll be given return instruction. GameStop is also apparently reaching out to any known purchasers directly. The recall was issued on September 19, 2019, and the website also states that there are roughly 20,000 of these helmets out there, and at current, there have been no reported incidents, so it's good that everybody's safe from it. Still a little bit crazy of all games for something like this to happen. It's a game that already had so much negative backlash, like Fallout 76, that this is just gonna pile up onto it, and that is a little bit unfortunate. Additionally, a statement has been provided by Bethesda to Dual Shockers, and here's what it said. The helmets that are being recalled are not from our Fallout 76 Power Armor Edition, but are instead a different line of helmets sold exclusively by GameStop. The Fallout 76 Power Armor Edition helmets are unaffected. Consumers should visit the product recall page for instructions if they have purchased the GameStop helmet. So it's not something directly that Bethesda did. However, because this is attached to Fallout 76, you know that they're going to get some negative backlash attached to this and it's just a little bit funny how all of this has come together for a game like Fallout 76 and Bethesda has stayed rather committed to Fallout 76 as an experience. I mean they've rolled out a ton of new content. They're trying to make the game better. I just don't know if this game is recoverable at this point. Now I've always been of the notion that any game is recoverable. We've seen Final Fantasy 14. We've seen No Man's Sky but a game like Anthem that's a little bit too far gone. Fallout 76 I feel like is teetering on that edge of being too far gone but whatever. Here's another train wreck for you to sink your teeth into. All right, moving on from that, Final Fantasy VII Remake is without a doubt one of the most anticipated games of 2020, and the box art has been revealed for the game. The artwork itself pays homage to the North American cover used in the original Final Fantasy VII release and features hero Cloud Strife ready to take on the tyrannical Shinra Corporation. It shows him looking up to Shinra Corporation. I think this is a great callback. I didn't really want to see some new box art that was going to be totally, totally different. Final Fantasy VII Remake is a game that, for a lot of people, is really built on nostalgia. I mean, this remake would not have happened if there wasn't that nostalgia attached to Final Fantasy VII, and the box art kind of goes to show with that. Now, whenever I talk about Final Fantasy VII Remake, I also like to add that Square Enix has yet to vocalize what is the content within the Final Fantasy VII Remake, and now that we have the box art, nowhere in the cover does this say that it's part one, and I just think that's a disaster waiting to happen for some people. I really think they need to clarify to people the contents of the Final Fantasy VII Remake. I just think it's a little bit of a slimy move to remake a game like the Final Fantasy 7 Remake, use the same box art, kind of promote it as all of this content is coming with Final Fantasy 7 because it hasn't been an overbearing statement of, oh, this is only going to include the first half of the game or the first quarter of the game. Now, I understand from a standpoint of, oh, we don't want to give away any spoilers because there are some major, major spoilers to be given away with the Final Fantasy 7 Remake, but it does rub me a little bit the wrong way. Am I excited for the game? Absolutely. I already have the Steelbook Edition pre-ordered. I am getting this game without a doubt, and I'm super excited that they added in a classic mode for those of you that want to check that out. There's going to be a lot of different summonings in the game. This game looks incredibly robust.
robust and it's a game that's going to be absolutely massive and Square Enix needs some massive massive game releases after they had a couple fumbles with games like Left Alive Final Fantasy 7 Remake is one of those games that they can guarantee to be a blockbuster success I feel like that's one of the main reasons they are segmenting it into multiple parts why only release one game that's going to sell multiple millions of copies when you can release three or four games that could sell multiple millions of copies I mean it makes all the sense in the world you want to get the most mileage out of the Final Fantasy 7 Remake one story about the sales of this game that I think will be really interesting to monitor is that how do the sales piggyback from one another? How does Final Fantasy 7 Remake Part 2 sell in comparison to Final Fantasy 7 Remake Part 1? Obviously, I think it goes without saying that Part 1 is going to sell the most. Will that parlay into success for a reasonable amount for Part 2 and Part 3 or even a Part 4 if they go that far? I don't necessarily know and that's why the Final Fantasy 7 Remake, this first part has to be really, really good and you do have to offer a reasonable amount of content and I do think they will offer a reasonable amount of content. It's just for those people that are a little bit less glued to gaming as a whole and they just see Final Fantasy 7 Remake at their local Best Buy or Walmart and they're like, damn, I played that game back in the day when I was 15 years old or whatever the case may be. And now they buy the game as an adult and the game just abruptly ends and they're like, wait a second, there's a lot more to Final Fantasy 7 and that's just where I'm coming at it as far as that is concerned. But moving on from that, I also want to talk a little bit about the Echo Conscious Side Scroller and Endling that's been announced for the PlayStation 4 and it's coming out in quarter one of 2021. The game already has its Steam page also up so it is coming to PC and a couple of other platforms. Visually, this game looks awesome. It employs a really cool art style and it notes as the last mother fox, keep your cubs alive and reach the only place on earth where humans cannot harm them. Experience how life would be in a world ravaged by mankind through the eyes of the last fox. On earth, in this echo conscious adventure, discover the destructive effect of the human race, which corrupts day after day the most precious and needed resources of the natural environments. Explore Endling's 3D side-scrolling world and defend your cubs, three tiny and defenseless furballs, feed them, see how they grow up level after level, notice their unique personalities and fears, and most importantly, make them survive. Use the cover of night to sneak with your litter towards a safer place, spend the day resting in an improvised shelter, and plan for your next movement carefully since it could be the last one for you or your cubs. Explore devastated environments based on real issues, hunt other animals to feed your cubs, and avoid becoming the prey. Put your survival instinct to the test and get involved in emotionally taxing decisions and bring your cubs to the last safe place where humans cannot harm them. Kind of interesting that we're getting all these echo conscious announcements recently. We recently got the announcement of the PlayStation 5 feature that is going to save power and, and now we have a game designed to point out some of the shortcomings to how we behave as humans. I think it's really cool as much flack as gaming gets for games like Grand Theft Auto, you know, being a bad influence or whatever the case may be. Games like Endling I think have a definite place in the market. Now this is a game that's not going to be out for a very very long time. It's tentatively scheduled for quarter 1 2021 but whenever a game is this far out to be released, you have to take that release window with a grain of salt and quarter 1 2021 obviously should get you your mind racing on whether or not this game will also be available on the PlayStation 5. Now, obviously, the PlayStation 5 is going to feature full backwards compatibility with the PlayStation 4, so I don't think that's going to be too much of an issue. But nonetheless, Endling Extinction is Forever is the subtitle. It looks like a really cool game. Art style reminds me a lot of a game like Firewatch. It has like a little bit of a watercolor art style, but I definitely dig it. And this is a game that I think come the time of its release, I'm not saying everybody's going to swarm around it right now and they're going to get excited for a game like this 18 months ahead of its release. However, I think when it's released, it's a game that's going to garner that immediate storm of people checking it out, people wanting to play. That's kind of what happened with Firewatch. That's what happens with a lot of these lower key releases. And I could see Endling Extinction is forever seeing something pretty similar to that. So hopefully that turns out pretty well. And that's going to conclude this video again. Another Fallout 76 train wreck as the T-51 power armor helmet that GameStop put out has some issues. And now it's being recalled. Final Fantasy VII Remake gets its box art revealed. It is very much paying homage to the original original release of 1997, and it's a slick box art if I say so myself. Interestingly enough, how are the future box arts going to look? That's something we could dissect later on as well, and the Echo Conscious side-scroller Endling has been announced for the PlayStation 4. That'll be coming in quarter 1, 2021. That concludes this video. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.
Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.